Um, just to give you a bit of background about myself, so I'm a registered nurse. Primarily Tresillion is staffed by registered nurses. We all um, have extra qualifications in um, parent craft, infant feeding, that, that sort of thing. Um, I've been working at Tresillion now for about almost 10 years and I work on our live advice service which operates in the evening and I also work on our telephone parent helpline. Uh, Tresillion is one of Australia's largest parenting organisations. We've been around for many years. We're a free government service, so any time you access our services, you don't need to pay. Uh, we're based in Sydney. We have three, um, three centres within Sydney, at Canterbury, at Penrith and at Willoughby. They're in-house, so if ever you're needing extra support, you can come in. Infant, um, baby and you are covered on Medicare. And um, we can work one-on-one -on -one with you to help, um, if you're experiencing any um, sleep and settling problems, help you there. Um, our parent helpline operates uh, every um, day of the week between 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. That's a very popular service. And the live chat that I work on is Monday to Friday from 5 to 11 p.m. at night. We just chat in real time together. It's not a forum, it's a one-on-one -on -one service. Okay, so let's go on to sleep. Tresillion is actually very well known for our support with sleep and settling. What I'm going to share with you today is evidence-based research. Things have changed quite a lot, especially in, over the time that I've worked in this position. Um, main take-home point I do want to share is if you do hear of anybody telling you to let your baby cry, and the cry it out method is quite old-fashioned. Believe it or not, there's still practitioners which will charge you money to teach you those skills. And um, I would try to avoid that if at all possible. Um, some people still do it if they don't mind their baby crying, but we know now that there's other ways it is um, better to do this. And that is responsive settling. So just a few um, little tips. Tresillion um, developed this responsive settling approach probably about say 10 years or more ago in response to infant mental health and attachment theory research, which has really surged on in recent years. And what we want to do is um, be there to comfort our babies when they're needing it, but we can gently challenge them to learn the skills to um, develop good and independent sleep. Just a little few basics about sleep. It says their first year of life. I'll let you read. You don't need me to read that for you. I'll just add my knowledge on top of it. I'd actually push that out to 24 months. I think once your child's two, you can breathe a sigh of relief if they're sleeping through the night, but it may take you that long to help support your babies to learn that skill. And that's because every baby, every family is individual. So don't feel pressured if those around you have a baby sleeping through the night and your one's still waking quite a few times. That's quite normal. Um, four to six months, that's sort of um, quite a good little tidbit there. Uh, the first three months of life, babies can um, wake more often at night. From three to four months onwards, the, the natural body clock, the hormones that regulate our body cycle, starts to kick in. So babies do have the potential then to sleep longer at night. And normally if you want to get into sleep training your baby, that's when you would start practising those skills. Okay, it says 13 to 14 hours. I actually had a chat with that with my colleagues before coming here. I'd actually make that as low as nine. So there's some infants who will only sleep nine hours in 24. Obviously, those children will probably be a little bit more tired. But on average, in my experience, I'd say 12 to 14 hours is normal sleep. So, um, and that pretty much stays the same right up until they are well into um, infant school. Just what changes as they grow is that they sleep longer at night and they're more awake in the day. But total sleep pretty much um, stays the same. Okay, and the um, yep, so as they grow, they'll have less day sleeps, sleep longer at night. So normally by the time a child is between one and a year and a half, they'd probably have um, one nap a day and be sleeping longer at night. And... Um, in the day, often there are some babies who only sleep briefly. They might only sleep for 30 minutes, and we call that a cat nap. But if your baby wakes and they're happy after sleeping that briefly, you don't need to push them to have more. 
be guided by your baby. That's what's important with response to settling. You're responding to your baby's cues, not by the clock. And that's what's actually changed a lot over the years. Okay, so crying is normal with children. They cry for all reasons. And as a new parent and with a new baby, what your job is, is and you get confidence this as your child grows, you're looking at what they're telling you with their cry. They certainly could cry to say, I'm sleepy, but they could also cry to say, I'm hungry, I've got wind pain, I just want to be cuddled by you. They cry for lots of different reasons. Uh, typical crying patterns. I think three to four months, I think they actually peak un under that, normally from about six to 10, 12 weeks. I'm going to be a little bit different here with what they've said there. They can peak with crying. I think you'll normally find from four months on the crying will be less. Not, not as much as when you have a new baby in the home. Okay, we talk about sleep cycles a lot. You'll notice on Tresillion, if you read our literature, ideally each day nap consists of two sleep cycles, with each sleep cycle being between 30 to 50 minutes. As adults, our sleep cycles are 60 to 90 minutes. That's just what changes from childhood to anybody with teenagers, their sleep cycles are like about 12 hours, getting them up. You can pay back them when they're older down the track, wake them up. But for a small child, it's usually about 30 to 50 minutes. We aim for two sleep cycles a day nap, so one to one and a half hours. But don't be concerned if your baby only has a 30-minute day nap. Some even have less. Some have 20 minutes. Some infants some can just sleep that long. But ideally, we try for two, day nap, um, two sleep cycles per day nap, and then they'd have continuous sleep cycles at night if they're these children that sleep through. Okay, so we're talking about now the, the, common, um, the common change in parenting that it has happened over the time that I've worked in this job is like when I had my children, we were timing how long they had to sleep for. So if they didn't want to sleep that long, too bad, they just cried in the room. But now we know that there's better ways to do things. So we, we're looking at a cue-based way to respond to our children when they're um, due to have a sleep. So we're looking at these type cues. Obvious ones are like yawning, falling asleep. That's a real obvious one. <laughs> um, what else is there? Uh, yawning, rubbing eyes is like an older one. But say for a small baby, they could suddenly start sucking their fist. Now, you'd think that that might mean they're hungry. But that's where you think, well, if I only fed you an hour ago and you're sucking your fist, perhaps I might need to put you to sleep. And this is all on our website because this comes with practice with your baby. Some babies, like a less subtle sign, is they were like really relaxed and then all of a sudden they're, they're flexing their body, they're looking tense. That's a sign that perhaps they're needing a change in what you're doing. So pop them to sleep. They could also start looking like they'll look at you and then they just phase out. There's a, they're zoned out looking at something else and that's another cue that they're needing to change what's happening. They might, And you look at the clock and you think, oh, okay, you've been awake an hour, an hour and a half, maybe I should try and pop you to sleep. Um, sometimes some parents, uh, which I don't think is a bad idea, might be guided by time when, you know, to help you put your baby to sleep and that's all on our website, we've got that. Like off the top of my head, a baby under three months would be up for one to one and a half hours before in the day before you pop them to sleep. When they're six months, that pushes out to two hours. When they're nine months, that's two and a half to three hours. By the time they're on one day nap, they've got to be able to last for five hours before you pop them down. But you're guided by your child. And if they're sort of getting to grizzle at like a two hour mark, then you think, okay, well, they might need to have a little nap. But we've got those times on our website because some parents really like you know, you want to have a little bit more factual stuff. Wrapping. Wrapping is an excellent age-old custom to help um, small babies learn how to settle. And you only need to look around here. I've walked past some um, swaddle suits, zip-up suits, wraps. It's a real growing business, um, especially uh, people are cotton on that know how to sort of set up a business and try and make money. Old-fashioned um, wraps. The main thing, if you haven't purchased a wrap and you're looking for something here, I'd look for something cotton and you want it to stretch. So you really stretch it out and to see if it'll stretch on the... Any sewers here, I'm not as knowledgeable with that, but I think it was on the bias or something or other like that. 
it has to stretch one way. If it doesn't stretch, don't buy it. So look for something nice and stretchy. Traditionally, muslin um, cloths were good with that. And, um, and now those, some babies get out of their wrap and you can get like little zip-up suits can help with that. Uh, the main thing with wrapping is it helps contain movement and that can facilitate you popping a baby to sleep. So really good when you have them first when they're little. Um, we are mindful of the SID safe sleeping, which is on their back and um, having them at the foot of the bed. I'll, go, I'll breeze through that because most of you will learn that um, in your antenatal classes about that. Okay, soothing in arms. Soothing in arms is pretty much just patting, rocking, shushing in arms, and that's all right. My main point is you, are, you won't spoil your baby, your newborn baby, if you need to do that. You're not going to make a rod for your back, especially in the first eight weeks of life. We don't sleep train anymore. But from three to four months on, when the body, um, the day body rhythms kick in, you can gently structure, sort of support your baby to learn these skills if they haven't done it instinctively. So many infants under particularly six weeks in age will have a crying period, which is very normal, can stretch from anywhere to two to eight hours every 24. That's really hard. And if your baby settles in arms, do it. You're not going to spoil the baby if you have to do that. Uh, I don't know for those that might be taking notes, if you want to Google the purple period of crying is a really good website which discusses this. It's American based but Tresillian endorses it. Hands on settling, that's basically patting, gentle body rocking, shushing. You'll notice that in our literature when you read it. That, uh, that's probably a foundation way of helping your child support to sleep which you would do forever. Sleep can regress at different developmental milestones in a child's life. It regresses when they're um, unwell. You can go on a beautiful trip and then their sleep regresses. So if ever, so hands on, that hands on settling is pretty much in arms, rocking, padding, which you can do for a child of any age, but in particular under six months. And then it progresses to what we call comfort settling. We just have this language now to describe sleep. Uh, what comfort settling is, is those hands-on settling methods, but we're actually doing it with the baby in the cot. So under six months, we don't um, want, well, like we're, we're not really pushing self-settling in a baby. Developmentally, until they're on at least probably um, two lots of solids in a day, many infants would still wake at night. So if your baby's needing extra support to soothe, you can either settle them in arms with rocking, patting, shushing, or you can sort of gently practice trying to get them a bit of separation happening by doing that in the cot. And you're definitely wanting to say do that from six months on, and that's an appropriate way to provide um, support to your baby if they're needing it. I'm racing through a bit because I sort of um, might have spent a bit of time before on other things. The main, the main point is if ever your child is distressed, and this is the whole essence of responsive settling compared to crying it out, pick your child up and calm them in arms because a crying infant is not going to go to sleep any quicker. For a child to go to sleep, if you think of it like ourselves, we need to be calm and relaxed to fall asleep. If we're stressed, work stress, zillion things on our mind, we're not going to go to sleep at night. We'll sleep when we're feeling calm and relaxed, and the same applies to a child. So the essence of response is settling, and you can lay the foundations when they're small, is trying to um, initially give them a lot of hands-on support to soothe if they do, transfer that to the cot as they get bigger. And after, say, from about seven to nine months onwards, you can even step back a bit and allow them the opportunity to settle on their own, but you're there to scoop them up and give them a cuddle in arms when needed. And this is just saying, because at Tresillian, we, um, we're there to help families, and there'll be families that are stressed out. If you've had no sleep, 24-7 for about a couple of, I'd even say after a week, you feel like you're ready to sort of hit the wall. And the thing is, a crying baby isn't going to get hurt compared to a child who might be shaken in arms. So if ever you're feeling overwhelmed, you're better off popping your baby in the cot and letting them cry. They're not going to hurt. 
get hurt that way, you walk out and calm yourself down because you're the adult. They're an infant. And the baby will respond to you better if you're calm and not stressed. Or you've got your partner there and um, just say, you take over, I need a break. Parental presence, that's a method more for older infants. So say probably from about six, six to nine months, you'll notice that many infants will start to form a closeness to their main caregiver, which um, not, not putting the guys down often is the mum and they get very clingy. And then all of a sudden they used to separate from you before, well, and then they're suddenly crying when you put them in the cot. Parental presence is to use on older infants where um, you've got them in the cot, you're um, reassuring them that they're safe, but you're not comforting them in arms. And that's quite good, especially for the older child that finds it hard to separate, because that's what they need to do. As long as you're holding them, they're not gonna learn the skills to self-settle, but you're nearby, you're either sitting in a chair you can lie next to, chuck a mattress on the floor. It depends on um, what you feel comfortable doing. And that, that's sort of just reiterating what I said there. But then if they get really upset, you're not gonna um, uh, cause any problems if you just pick them up and cuddle them and then pop them back in the cot. And um, they're saying there to try the parental presence if anybody has an older child. Um, three nights in a row, it may be pushed out longer and then you can call what, and on our brochure we've got gradual withdrawal. That's where you just sort of move your chair closer to the door to try and um, have a little bit of separation there. And then any of what we've said, our um, phone helpline, the live chat service that I'm on can offer support to you and um, our in-house services too where we have like a half day service and then that progresses to our uh, four day, sorry, five day, four night program. And have I got any extra time? A minute, a minute. Oh, I don't know what to say in a minute. I think the main thing, because I, I, I chat with a lot of people every day of the week, I think the main thing I want you all to take home is crying it out is old fashioned. Please don't do that. People pay, I can't believe it that they pay for these sleep consultants that do this such an old-fashioned method. The thing is, um, parenting's a partnership. It's very draining doing these um, methods when you're doing it on your own. So you don't have to be a martyr. Share with your partner. And um, slow steps. Every sleep is an opportunity to practice. And if you do have a child which is waking a lot at night, often you can practice in the day to give you confidence and then you can follow through at night because things sometimes don't seem as hard in the day. And um, yep, just small steps. And the main idea is you're wanting your baby to be calm when they're down in the cot. You don't want to sort of leave them crying for too long. And I think that's it. I really whisked through it all, but um, our information on our website um, just adds extra or to all what I said. Alrighty, thank you.